Hey guys, Jacob with Jacob Comics. All right, we have a really fun episode. We're gonna be reviewing Hulk number 10 from this week. And uh, yeah, <laughs> let's go ahead and get her out. Now, do wanna let you guys know before we get into that about the 600 subscriber giveaway. When we hit 600 subscribers, we'll be giving this book away. It's a Marvel number one. Uh, all you have to do is like the video, comment down below, and be subscribed to the channel. And when we hit 600 subscribers, we'll be raffling the book off based on comments on the, the road to 600. Alright guys, let's go ahead and get dived into Hulk. Now first off, I do want to let you know we're going to be going heavy into spoilers. So if you don't want to be spoiled for Hulk 10, that's your warning. Next, I want to shout out the creative team because without the creative team, we wouldn't have a comic book, right guys? So as the writer, we have Donny Cates, the art by Ryan Otley, inks by Cliff Rathburn, colors by Sonia Oback and Marty Gracia, and letters by VCs Corey Petit. There's a foreword, um, and that reads, Hulk has recently undergone a dramatic transformation. His alter ego, Bruce Banner, has split the Hulk into three distinct parts. The Hulk's body has been turned into a starship. Banner's psyche pilots it from within the Hulk's mind, and the Hulk's psyche fuels the starship with his anger. During a cataclysmic battle between Hulk and Thor, Bruce Banner revealed that a mysterious dark force called Titan had seized control of his body and used it to commit horrific violence, murdering a bar full of patrons in El Paso, Texas, and so Thor told the world that the Hulk had perished in that explosive fight so that Starship Hulk could fly off into the far reaches of space and perhaps find a way to heal his fractured psyche. But... When a planet coated in gamma with a population whose strength might rival the Hulk's came across the starship's radar, Bruce couldn't resist the siren song of a place where he might belong, and there to greet him was the mysterious monolith. And it gets kind of started into the story, uh, back to uh, talking with Doc Sampson and having his daily therapy, right? And he says, I was five years old when my father murdered my mother. And that day, sitting in the police station alone, waiting for my aunt to come and get me while everyone did their best to ignore the kid covered in blood that wasn't his. That's the first time I remember feeling weak. I had been told that I was weak all my life. By my father, by other kids at school, and, but not by her. No. My mother told me I was the strongest thing in the galaxy. As we see a, a story from his memory b before his mother died, and she tells Bruce that he's not weak after being in a fight with a, with a bully and losing. She says, Bruce, I've told you, you don't, we don't use that word. And you don't listen to anyone who tells you that. No one. No one gets to call you weak. Here, give me your hand. Okay? Listen. I know I'm just your mom, and I don't know nearly as much about science as you and your dad, but what's the most powerful thing in the whole wide universe? The one thing no one can go anywhere near because it's so strong, not even the astronauts. Bruce replies, the sun? His mom says, yes. And the sun is so powerful that its light gives us all of the plants and the trees and gives us warmth so we can grow. And it comes from millions and millions of miles away. Bruce says, 93 million miles. She says, see, that's so strong. But look, that's your shadow. You made that. Do you know what that means? It means that the most powerful thing in the universe, the strongest thing ever in the galaxy, burned through 93 million miles to get to that sidewalk, only to be stopped by you. As Bruce thinks, whenever I was afraid after that, when my other kids were mean or my dad was cruel, I knew I was okay, that I was strong, because I would always have my shadow. 
and my shadow couldn't be stopped. But then it went away and the fluorescent lights of that police station. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find my shadow. So I closed my eyes and I heard someone say that no one could hurt me and I knew it was a lie, that the hurt was always going to be there. Because I did find it, I found my shadow again, but when I did, it wasn't my shadow anymore. It was him. He had broken the sun and I would always be in his shadow. And uh, then he's kind of awakened from from that to uh, to talk some Planet Hulk stuff, um, to talk to some of the people on Planet Hulk, and uh, just a, a little bit of I'm not quite sure if that shadow he's referring to is his father or Titan or possibly both. But yeah, um, and then so we see the basically. Um, she tells the story of how they uh, how they sort of evolved and how this whole planet came to be, right? I'll give you a sample of one of the really cool panels in here explaining the creation of Hulk planet. And, uh, you know, long story short, basically, earlier in issue six, when Hulk was actually trying to leave that one planet that was you know run by general thunderbolt ross and they had been tossing they had been building all these uh gamma irradiated creatures and if they didn't you know weren't controllable or weren't uh what they wanted they were tossing them into this abyss they thought well they ended up landing on this planet this planet um throughout many many years of this kind of evolved into a, a, a place where gamma plants grew and, you know, they, they had their, they had kind of their, their a primitive home and they, they stopped fighting each other. Um, they had fought for eons and their spilled gamma blood eventually bled into the planet and that's, okay. So then when Bruce exploded the device so that they could no longer send more gamma irradiated hulks to this planet, uh, it kind of sent off a, a mini, a mini gamma explosion, if you will, of science and knowledge. And so they gained a lot of science and knowledge and time seems to go faster on this Hulk planet. So th this has happened at least for a while. Now, there's also a reveal within all this that um, there is a secret that they are hiding from Bruce Banner. Um, you know, he's he's in their compound talking to him and, and thinks they're his friends. But there are, there is some sort of secret being hidden from him, right? Uh, the big guy on the front cover, this is his only actual appearance in the... Maybe this, maybe that's going to be more of like the next issue because that doesn't quite happen in this one yet. But he does uh, ask him to, you know, to fight. He's like, hey, would you give me, the, give me the honor of fighting me in the God Ball? And basically everybody's kind of worshiping him because he's the one that caused this, uh, this massive gamma radiated science and knowledge kind of bump that's the best way to describe it um and then there's kind of i guess a reveal of but but not we don't know what they're going to do about it at the end here we do see the one girl come up and reveal what she was hiding from bruce earlier and she shows uh kind of this picture of what looks like titan the part of titan hulk inside titan inside hulk's brain and, uh, you know, this new character here, let me see her name again, Monolith. And so Monolith is talking with, uh, with the younger girl and she comes up and says, Madame, I, I don't mean to interrupt the celebration, but Monolith says out with it. And she says the scans, they, they show. And Monolith says, yes, I know I saw it. 
there's nothing we can do. Bruce Banner is going to die. And it says, next God Ball. Which sounds like it's going to be Bruce Banner versus this, like I showed this guy on the front cover here. Uh, right here. All right, so um, yeah, this this one was uh, not as not as strong of an issue as number nine, uh, but it's it's moving the plot forward. Um, I don't know; it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to to describe. I, I I feel like this was definitely a setup issue, and uh, we're we're kind of building for for bigger things down the road. Uh, Obviously, there was a, a bit of a reveal, like I kind of paused and pointed out earlier, which I think was the, the main takeaway from this issue. There was a bit of a reveal there that, that possibly what has caused this Titan um, personality is, is maybe even um, some sort of multiple personality thing going on within Bruce Banner stemming from uh, a very abusive childhood and he you know what i mean he kind of had this shadow personality that uh, was unable to be stopped that's kind of a guess at where where i'm where it looks like it's going and that could be that could be pretty interesting if that's the actual what caused titan um obviously titan isn't uh isn't a nice hulk uh, if he did uh, kill that, kill a bar full of patrons, right? Um, so I give Hulk number 10 a thumbs up. I feel like we're still moving moving towards... Um, I will say, you know, it, if uh, parental abuse or anything like that kind of rubs you wrong, this might not be the book for you. It, there, there seems to be like there's definitely going to be a, a strong story told here about... Um, about that and and uh, I'm sort of sort of actually even more curious now than before to see if that uh, if if you know my prediction turns out to be right because that that kind of will be a uh, yeah if they if they do it right it could be very it could be a very good story um, and it's that's kind of where it's looking at, looking to go right now the last two issues I've I've definitely I've definitely been kind of yeah, I, like I said, I give I give Hulk number ten a thumbs up. I'm I'm on board. Um, all right, we'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Um, remember, if you like this kind of content, if you watch this far into the video, like, comment, and subscribe for your chance to win the Marvel number one when we hit 600 subscribers. All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow and have a great day.